By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a very interesting game against an Underworld Dreams deck that my patron Jean is bringing to the table. And the interesting thing here about Jean is it is a Frenchman living in Myanmar. And I believe he's the only old school player in that country. So if you're living in Myanmar yourself, listening to this and you're playing old school, please leave a comment because he's looking for people to play with. Um, that being said, uh, he's got a very cool collection, a beautiful deck that I'm going to play against, and I'm actually bringing my counter burn deck to the table. Now I'm going to do a little bit of deck tech. I have pictures of both of these decks, so it might be worth your while to just look at the deck tech. But understandably, if you want to go straight to the games, no worries. There's a timestamp below in the description. Click on it and it'll take you straight to the games. Let's first take a look at the deck of Jean. So this is the deck that I am up against. This is the deck of Jean and look at it. What a beauty. It's completely black bordered. I tip my hat to you, sir. Very impressive. We see that it is fully powered there. Look at that. We've got all the blue power that you can need. And especially Time Twister can be very strong in an Underworld Dreams deck because Underworld Dreams is an enchantment from Legends for the people that don't know for three black to cast. And what it does is it gives your opponent one damage every time he or she draws a card. So in, in other words, whenever I'm drawing cards, this this matchup it's probably gonna hurt me and he's also playing with uh, four howling minds because obviously they go hand in hand you let your opponent draw more cards your opponent gets more damage and also black vice is obviously an auto include here because you're you're letting your opponent draw tons of cards give him some additional damage in the upkeep through the black vices and then we see some control elements here with a double abyss we see no creatures uh, we see City in a Bottle, which I think is a very good inclusion here because some of the biggest, baddest creatures that are being played in Old School, including in my counter, Burn Deck, or from the Arabian Nights. So you've got Serena Pafrits, Ernim Jins, Juzum Jins, all of them. It takes care of all of them. Um, let's take a look. We see, of course, Winds of Change, also a great card. Again, you want to let your opponent draw a lot of cards. That's the whole idea of this deck. And at the same time, you want to keep control over what your opponent is doing. So Blood Moon can be great for that. The Abyss can be great for that. Those are kind of like those soft lock uh, control elements in this brew. I think Relic Barrier is also great to include. In my opinion, this card is a little bit underplayed because just for two, you can tap an artifact and uh, you know two to cast and then you can just tap an artifact basically for free after that and there are always artifacts in old school and don't forget those very annoying mishra's factories so we can get the relic barriers to do to take them out of commission now what's really nice here are the three flash counters so this counter is an instant or an interrupt uh, and it's only one blue and one to cast and i think in this deck that is very important i mean you could go for counter spells of course but the question is always, what do you want to do with your counterspell? In the case of Jean, you probably want to protect your most valuable assets, which I think is actually not the Underworld Dreams, but the Howling Mine. You want to just keep drawing your resources and then you draw into solutions by itself. But you want to protect that from disenchants or shatters or, you know, other nasty stuff that's going to try to get rid of your artifact. And most of those, um, those cards that try to attack your permanents are going to be instants or interrupts and your flash counter is an answer to those. So I think it's really a nice inclusion, especially when you start playing against a deck, you think, okay, he doesn't have two blue open. Now is the moment to cast my disenchant. No, it's not because he's playing with flash counter. So he only needs one blue source. Um, okay, so this is the deck of Jean. Let's take a look at my brew. Okay, and these are the cards that I am playing with today. I'm playing with my counter burn deck again. And um, for the people that are following the channel, you've probably seen other matches where I'm playing counter burn. And I basically have two versions now. One of the versions includes Suchi, City in the Bottles, Copy Artifacts. And the other one is, you could, I guess you could say the more traditional one, but of course with some Timmy flavor. So in this one, this is definitely the more traditional one where I play with a playset of Serenip and Fritz. So obviously I've taken out my city in the bottles. Uh, there are no Suchis in here. So Serena Befreed is my creature of choice for this brew. And what I've done, I've added a Sheevan Dragon. So you probably spotted it already. So hopefully I can play out my Sheevan. Um, as you probably know, Counter Burn is very much control. And it's really something that um, I unexpectedly really enjoy playing actually, because it's a completely new way of playing. I have You have to wait a lot. You have to do a lot in the end step of the opponent. You really have to, to time 
when to play your sources and when to do what. And you really have to understand, listen up, I'm now going to play something that means I cannot counter next turn. And also with countering, it's counter magic is, is harder than you think. You have to think, okay, what am I going to counter? Is he just playing this to divert my counter or is he just trying to think, okay, let's see, maybe he doesn't have a counter spell. So you have to really kind of get into that mode. And some players are much better at knowing when to time a counter spell than others. And I'm definitely not, re not really that good yet in playing with counter magic. Um, what we see here in this deck, we have seven counter spells. We have two power sinks, a uh, full play set of counter spells, and of course, mana drain. Also, we've got um, a lot of direct damage in this deck. We've got four Psy Blasts, four Lightning Bolts, and four Chain Lightning. So that means that on direct damage alone, I can kill my opponent. So I don't really have to worry too much at dealing damage um, with my creatures. And of course, I have my four Surrender Befreaks, I have my Sheevan Dragon, but I also have my four Factories that can be very... Um, can be very useful in this matchup, but I also play with two Blood Moons. So again, every time you have to choose, am I gonna play my Blood Moons, taking out my own factories, or you know, what am I gonna do when? Am I gonna go direct damage directly to the face of my opponent, which I think in this brew is not the best thing to do because this brew is definitely more controlled than aggro. You can also play counter burn aggro, and in those brews, you usually see Flying Man as well making an appearance. Okay, so this is basically my pile of cards today. So let's see um, how this works against the Underworld Dreams brew of Jean. Let's go to game number one. Game number one, and it's my opponent Jean sitting on the left here. Look at that opening Volcanic Island into Mox Jet, into Howling Mine. So it's letting me draw tons of cards, which may sound nice now, but as we know, this Underworld Dreams deck wants me to draw cards. Look at that, starting with the Loa and Amok Sapphire, so it looks like I'm having a pretty strong start myself, but it all depends on how quickly Jean can get like a Vice on the table or an Underworld Dreams on the table, so we'll, we'll have to see. It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here thinking what to do if I want to play something else, if I want to activate it in my own turn, deciding not to. Drawing two cards here, Dark Ritual into Underworld Dreams, and I'm unable to counter. So again, you can wonder, was it a good move here to... I'm actually not using my Loa anymore. I'm going to 18, my dice unfortunately are a little bit out of the screen, by the way. But what I wanted to say is, was it a good move? Ooh, this is powerful energy flux. There's just so much happening here. So he has to pay two during his upkeep per artifact. So he's just paying for his soul ring and using his mox jet and a mana to pay for the howling mine. And uh, what I wanted to say earlier is maybe I should have played an island and a mox sapphire having counter capability open instead of going for the greedy Loa there in that first turn. And look at that, I'm losing my own Mox Sapphire here to the Energy Flux. Doesn't really matter. Discarding here to Brain Geyser, realizing it's not going to be of any use. There's some more damage here, so I'm going to 13. And what's interesting, of course, here to note is that we never know what kind of decks we're up against, just like in a real tournament. So I make my decision just purely based on what I usually do. And of course, as soon as you know that you're playing against um, oh, look at that counter spell. You're off the black vice, but there's a flesh counter by Jean, and this shows the strength of flesh counter because I wasn't really thinking about flesh counter. I wasn't really afraid of it. I mean, I still would have pretty much done the same. I'm already on eight here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What can I do? I mean, that counter spell was really, really huge. Flesh countering that counter spell. Playing a time elemental here. And this was actually not on my original list that you saw earlier during the deck tech. Uh, I played this game a while ago and I guess I was still playing with uh, Time Elemental back then. It's really a great card, I love it. And I'm now playing with Sheevan instead of Time Elemental, by the way. So that's the difference if you look at the uh, list that I posted prior to this, uh, in the introduction of this video. Let's take a look here. Tapping my City of Brass, taking a damage here, going to seven for that Lightning Bolt. Obviously, I want to empty my hand, taking two damage again from the Vice, going to five life. And of course, that um, City is not really helpful. I do have to Time Elemental now, so I can start sending stuff back to his hand. Uh, what is he gonna do? Playing another Black Vice. 
Tapping here for four, taking a damage. And what am I gonna send back? I just have to check what is gonna give me the most damage. And I think we're basically coming to the conclusion that I cannot survive this. It's hard because I cannot tell how many cards. I'm choosing to go for the Vice, taking two damage here from the Underworld Dreams. That means I'm on two. At least I'm still alive. And if you're alive, I mean, you can do something. But remember, I'm playing blue-red, so there's no way for me to get rid of that enchantment other than to send it back with the Time Elemental. But I also probably want to counter... I uh, want to counter that Black Vice, and I'm pointing out that that City of Brass is now really starting to hurt with only two lives. I'm actually discarding, meaning I've got a full grip of seven. I think it's impossible for me to win this one. He's probably going to cast, uh, paying for his Howling Mine again, by the way, he's probably going to recast Black Vice. And here you see how strong this deck is. So there's the Black Vice, probably going to counter... There's just nothing I can do. I'm just going to send it back. And I'm already saying with my gestures, it doesn't really matter. That's it. That's game one. And he, what I wanted to say here, you can really see the power of um, of the Underworld Dreams deck that despite the energy flux, because he doesn't need a lot of expensive cards or a lot of permanents on the board uh, to be successful, he doesn't really mind you know, just paying the two mana for the... Uh, you know, for the for the Howling Mine or paying the two mana for the um, uh, for the Black Vice uh, because the other artifacts are just mana rocks and he can just let them go. So really nice to see this first game. Uh, let's go to our sideboards and then we'll go to game number two. Game number two. And um, now I know that I'm playing against Underworld Dream so I could board against it. And uh, actually, more importantly, I guess I could play in a different way because I kind of now know that my opponent has a few key cards that I want to try to counter. And let's see, Jean is taking a mulligan here, so that means he's gonna draw seven and put one of the cards on the bottom of his library, London mulligan rule. And what you probably know is it's a slightly different setting here because we actually played this over uh, a series of games. Um, <clears throat> we played these two games later than the first game, that's what I'm trying to say here. Uh, let's see, so I'm on the play since I lost. John is down to six. That's already a good start for me. Opening with a Volcanic Island and passing turn. So I cannot counter yet. So let's see if we can have an explosive opening here. With, starting with the Batlands, just passing. So again, it's good news for me. I'm using my Strip Mine, but there is a quick bolt in response, but that Batlands is gone. That means I'm going to 17, but John is losing his land and look at that swamp into a vice in response on his end step i'm going to bolt him so that means we're both on 17 or a bit of a bold game so far taking one damage here having five in hand playing that second island meaning that i can start countering th uh, stuff now and there's a lightning bolt in response i want to say counter spell but it's actually a lightning bolt drawing two cards from that Howling Mine. And I mean, I'm getting into a risky territory here. If he can find an Underworld Dreams, look at that, a second Howling uh, Mine, but I'm countering that with the Mana Drain. So that means I've got two mana showing that there with the dice. So now on my first main phase, I've got two extra mana to spend. A blue and two prop, exactly, Surrender Perfreet hitting the table. And that's really nice with Mana Drain. So I was able to play a Surrender Perfreet and at the same time, keeping my counter magic open, not countering this second Howling Mine, are unable to. Drawing here extra cards, three cards. So this is going to become problematic at a certain point here. Attacking here for three, Jean's going to 11. And if he can find an Underworld Dreams, of course he needs a third black mana as well. Look at that, he's got a Mox Jet, Mox Sapphire, Mox Ruby, Basic Island. And a Basic Swamp, trying to cast his third Howling Mine, but there's a counter spell from my side. No flesh counter here from Jean, and I wonder if he's going to play out another threat. He's not doing it, it's my turn taking damage from the Afrit, going to 14. And not taking any damage from the vice because I'm just able to play out so many cards every time. And of course, that's a nice thing about um, playing counter burn. You've got a lot of cheap spells. So in that way, it's really good to have Howling Mines. 
because I can just empty my direct damage. So I guess that's an advantage for me. Attacking here for three, so Jean is going to eight. And yeah, playing another one. If he can find a city in a bottle, this would be a great moment to play it. He's on 11. Or sorry, I'm on 11 after that lightning bolt and Jean is on eight here. Playing a Chaos Orb. But he's just not finding the right tools. And I'm playing a Power Sink here. And the big problem here with Power Sync is that it doesn't work on um, it doesn't work on a Moxon, so he has to tap his island. He doesn't have to tap his Moxon. Look at that! A time walk afterwards. That's pretty good. And he's finding that city in a bottle that I talked about earlier. Both Surrender Ifrits are dead now. They're gone. I cannot play out any other Ifrits because of the city. Maybe this is going to give Jean the game, but remember, he's on eight. I play with tons of uh, direct damage. Let's see what I can do. Drawing three cards here, taking no damage yet. Playing another island, playing a Mox Ruby. And what can I do? And uh, let's see, playing a Wheel of Fortune. That's interesting. Hoping, probably hoping to find, is there a counter spell? Yes, no, there's a shatter. Okay, there is a shatter. But I'm playing a blue elemental blast from the sideboard to protect me from that shatter. And I'm probably hoping to find just direct damage just to kill him. He's on eight, two side blasts will do the trick. Playing first a mock sapphire here. And paying three. Three, not a Cyblast. I thought I was going to see a Cyblast. Actually playing an Energy Flux, and that could be pretty problematic here. Attacking for two with my Mishra's Factory. That means he's on six now. And I believe that's actually the first time I'm attacking with the Mishra's Factory. And now he's throwing away his own city in a bottle. He has to make tough choices. And his Moxon go as well. And I think this Energy Flux is really devastating here the only card that he's trying to save not quite sure what he's doing here i think he can save more but i guess the only card he wants to save is the mox jet and there's an underworld dreams hitting the table can i counter it but even if i can i mean do i really want to there are no howling mines on the table i'm on 11. i'm actually playing a shatter on his Mox Jet, trying to attack his mana base a little bit. And now I have to make choices because I cannot keep up to pay for all my artifacts. Look at that, paying my two Mox mana to keep my uh, Soul Ring afloat. And there it goes, Mountain into Factory attacking. And there it is, a Cyblast. And that Cyblast gives me this game number two. That means it's 1-1. One, one. And that means we're gonna get a third game. Exciting stuff here. Let's go to game number three. Game number three is about to start. It's 1-1. One, one. Jean gets to go. Remember, he also uh, took a mulligan in that first, uh, first game, or second game, I should say. So he's already gone off with a better start, not taking a mulligan and just um, being on the play. There we see a chain lightning from me. Oh, and an ancestral recall on my end step. And uh, interesting to note here, of course, I'm playing without blue power. You might be wondering why. Well, I simply don't have it. Um, so, but I always do find it interesting uh, the impact that blue power can have on a game. We know they're very powerful, but I mean, as we see in this matchup, it's it's very close. You know, it's not like blue power is very dominant. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see how it goes. And, and Jean playing a Volcanic Island in response, just playing another... Lightning Bolt, obviously I know what kind of deck I'm playing against and I know that I just want to empty my hand quickly and I'm just actually counting on Jean to just cast some Howling Mines and give me some cards back. And there I see a Psy Blast on end step. So I just, I've just played tons of Direct Damage here. 10 damage already, only done with Direct Damage spells. A Chain, a Lightning Bolt, a Psy Blast and I'm not taking any damage from that uh, vice, or at least not a lot of it. Playing a basic swamp. 
And it's hard to see because there's some glare there, but he actually has, that is a uh, Felwer stone there in the left corner. And he's playing a Blood Moon. And the strange thing here is I'm actually deciding to counter it. And the reason for this is, oh, wow, an Abyss. Okay, well, that's not too bad. The reason I'm countering is that I want to keep, I want to be able to counter his spells. So if I don't counter it, my Volcanic turns into a Mountain, just like my Factory, and I cannot counter any spells anymore. So even though I'm playing with Blood Moon myself, in this particular situation, I want to keep the counter option open. And let's see. Oh, it looks like my opponent is going to try to do something against the glare here. Um, I remember. It helps a little bit. It helps. I mean, now we can, at least we can see the Felwer Stone. So thank you for that. Uh, playing a Brain Geyser. Wow, I hope I can counter this. There we see that counter spell. There we see that counter spell. So that's very important here. Attacking with my factory, still having my two blue open. And there you see how important it is to be being able to counter. And I guess John is asking how many counter spells have you played out? How many? Ooh, playing a city in a bottle. But with that abyss on there, I'm, I wasn't really planning on casting uh, any creatures. And there's a nice shatter here to take care of my Mishra's factory. Remember, Jean is already on eight. Playing a lightning bolt, going to five. So there's not that much that I need. And things are looking good for me here. The only problem is, of course, that I cannot play any creatures. So I'm just now fully hoping to draw into my burn and trying to stay alive in the process. But that being said, Underworld Dreams can be very explosive. If you can get an Underworld Dreams on the table, another Vice on the table, for example, and then a, um, a Wheel of Fortune or a Time Twister, I mean, things can get really difficult for me really quick. I'm already taking damage here, going to 13. So that means I've got five in hand because I get double damage from those Vices. Let's see what I can do. I wonder if I boarded in some extra artifact destruction. Could this be a shatter maybe and step? There's a shatter and step. And I'm taking, trying to take care of one of the vices now, I remember. And there's Hercules recall. Interesting, taking everything back. Doesn't have to discard. And Hercules recall, another great card. And I'm actually taking damage, but I don't have to because he took away all his vices. And of course, now I have counter possibilities as well. So I can think, what do I want to counter based on what I have in my hand? Let's see what John wants to play out. There we see a Felwer Stone being cast here. And I want to respond to that. Interesting. Look at that. I'm deciding to to counter it. The reason I'm doing this is because of Power Sync, because he is forced to tap his land to pay for it. So that means if he pays for to save the Felber Stone, which he has to because it's Power Sync, uh, it basically this is a time walk for me. So this kind of is a way to win an extra turn and to draw into direct damage. Now, interesting here is that John has some options to play an instant of course. So he cannot, what you cannot do with Power Sync is say, I'm going to tap everything, keep it in my pool, and then after your spell resolves, I'm going to use those mana to play something out. You cannot do that. But what you can do is you can say, in response to your Power Sync, I'm going to play an instant. So he can, yeah, like he can play a bolt. So he's playing a bolt now. And that does mean that he loses his Felwer Stone. Because now he's trying to play out a vice. He cannot play out a black vice. That is not possible. So we had a little, little talk about it. Uh, but of course, what he can do is he can save his Felwer Stone with his four mana, and then he can use his Felwer Stone to play out the vice, but then he, did, he cannot play out the bolt. So <laughs> it was a bit of a puzzle when we were in this situation, um, but this is basically what happened. So I hope that you were able to follow this little part. Um, so he's playing out his vice. He wants to deal damage. I've got six cards. I think my biggest problem here is the Abyss. Because if I play out a creature, it's simply going to die to the Abyss. Now, let's see what he's going to do. I still have some options here. He's playing out the City in a Bottle. This is interesting. I'm playing the Mana Drain over the City in a Bottle. Knowing that he still has the other cards. So, I'm sure there's some reasoning behind it. He's playing that Underworld Dreams again. Playing that Vice again. 
So I'm drawing a card, taking damage from that, going to 11. And remember, I have to two extra mana, so maybe I'm planning to play out a lot of creatures this turn, or at least two of them. Or are we going to see a double Surrendip? Oh, nice! Shiva! Shiva making an appearance here together with the Surrendip of Freed, so now it's understandable why I countered that city in a bottle. So I'm hoping that I can survive one more turn. Look at it, bringing me to seven. If I can survive next turn, I can sack the Surrendip Afrit to the Abyss and kill him with my Shivan. That's my game plan now. But of course, Jean also has a plan because he has double vice, he has Underworld Dreams, I'm on seven. I mean, a Wheel of Fortune would kill me right now, a Time Twister would kill me right now. But also maybe a Howling Mind to let me draw extra cards could potentially kill me. Interesting to note here is that I have only one card in hand, so I'm not taking any damage from the vices. So, I mean, seven is, is looking pretty good. And I guess if he would have had, you know, a draw seven spell, he would have uh, played that already. But he is thinking a lot. Playing a Howling Mind, that means at least two extra damage. Oh, an earthquake. That means I'm going to three, two damage from the vice, damage from the Serenip, or can I, is it possible for me to sacrifice the Serenip before it takes damage, because I have to sack it to the Abyss? And this is actually what we're trying to find out now. And um, what's actually happening, it, it took us a little while, um, but the, the situation is as follows. Both of the effects, so the effect of the Abyss and the Serenip go on the stack simultaneously. The player with priority can decide order, but it doesn't matter because the effect is already on the stack. So that means that no matter how I stack it, the one damage of the Serenip will just go through. So I'll take a damage from the Serenip, then the Abyss trigger will resolve, losing my Surrendip, and then drawing two cards. That's it, that's game. <laughs> oh, look at him. I mean, Jean, well done, man. Uh, you've won this. Fantastic, congratulations. Um, what a matchup, what a matchup. I'm looking forward to playing more games with you in the future for now. Thank you very much for this one. Um, and thank you all for watching and supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel more, you can do so by becoming a Patreon. Uh, you can check it out. There's a little info card appearing right now. You can also, of course, simply do what you do already. Watch the movies. If you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. Hit that little uh, bell that you can follow on my channel. Helps out a lot. Liking it, leaving a comment, sharing it on your socials. All that helps. So thank you very much if you are already doing that. Um, as for me, I'm going to continue making some more vids in these difficult times. Uh, thank you for your support. Stay healthy and see you next time on Timmy Talks, the channel. Oh, wait, I wanted to say the channel where we talk old school magic. But of course, we're first going to look at our patrons. Let's roll the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? The drunken sailor? The drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te samba kazik.